My name's Tom Fenning. And I'm Peter Skerritt. And this is the Reading Together podcast from Beckles Baptist Church, which aims to encourage us as a church family as we read through Tim Chester's book, Enjoying God, and it might prompt us to think further and talk about it more with other people so that we might live out what we are learning. Uh, This is the fifth episode of this podcast and we are now considering chapter four of Enjoying God. This is the block that is about how we relate to God the Father. Last time in our last episode we saw how it is through all our pleasures that we're able to experience and enjoy the Father's generosity and today we make a swing from talking about pleasures to talking about hardship. So in every hardship We can enjoy the Father's formation. That is what we learn here in chapter 4. Pete, what do we need to understand about our world in order that we can understand why hardship might be a means in which we know God's kindness to us? Yeah, uh, very much uh, that it continues from the previous chapters. If you've not read chapter 3, I'd recommend going back and reading that first because... Uh, he lays out the idea that we are not just in a world where sometimes God intervenes, but otherwise it's left to itself. Uh, actually, that it's what he calls a fathered world, so we can consider in, in everything that happens, in everything that comes to us, actually good and now painful and bad, seemingly, um, those things are from our Father and for our ultimate good. So he, he doesn't think that some things come from our Father and not other things, but actually the whole thing is under his hand. Uh, so that's where he kind of starts, really, with the, the thrust of the chapter. And the alternative, if we don't view our world as a fathered world, mm. is to say that actually our world is a world where just fatalistic forces are at work, yeah. which means that every hardship comes our way actually has added dimensions of pain because there's no hope of meaning behind it, there's no redeeming value to our hardship, it's just a reality of the world. Mm. Whereas as we see our world as a fathered world, not a fatalistic world, a fathered world under God's sovereign hand, we can see that there is redemptive purpose even in our hardships and our sufferings. This is very different to what Richard Dawkins famously said about the world, that at a root there is just blind, pitiless indifference. And we'd say, no, uh, at root there is the Father's love. Mm. And that just underpins everything very differently. Great. And that, that love translates hardship from just difficulty into... Well, in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, discipline, the love of a father shaping and forming and caring for his child. Now, we said uh, one of our first podcasts that one of the benefits of reading a Christian book is simply that a good one will help you chew on the scripture. Uh, you could read Hebrews chapter 12 and get very much what Tim's writing here, uh, but Tim's helping us work through chapter 12 of Hebrews. And... He, yeah, his first point is yeah, in every hardship uh, we can enjoy the Father's love and then he goes on to say and actually in every hardship we enjoy the Father's formation using the language of father, son, father, children mm. yeah, because what, what's most loving for a child if they, they are kind of wandering astray you, well, you could ignore them and hope nothing goes wrong but you can't be bothered to go and correct them mm. or you take the time and effort to correct and carefully discipline them, mm. that would show a bit more love. Great, yeah. So growing their character, growing, yeah, their, quite, yeah. growing them yeah, as yeah. people, that's and great. He says actually, therefore, you know, a bad day becomes, page 53, a bad day becomes a day full of God's fatherly discipline. Mm. And it just, it just shapes the way that you view your day. Mm. My bad day is still a day where I'm the son and God's the father. That's great. And it is worth saying that in those hardships, it's not that believers are being punished for their sin. There's that quote on page 54 from Frederick Lay, I don't know how you say his surname, (laughs) Lay, in which he says, God does not punish our sins in a legal sense, that he did fully at Calvary. The chastisements he brings upon his people are to be understood as the loving corrections of a merciful and tender-hearted father. I think that's that's really helpful. helpful. Would it be worth saying that uh, we both would agree that actually in terms of our life so far, yeah, fairly young baby faced. And um, I certainly don't feel like I have suffered in the way that many people have no, in indeed. life or in the church. Indeed, and in our church family, there are just loads of you folk there who are streaks ahead of us in your experience of hardships mm. firsthand that we have not faced. And our hope is that what we're looking at here is instructive for you as you reflect back. But actually for all of us, this chapter is instructive as we look forward so that we might be prepared for 
hardship and suffering that lays ahead of us, mm. that we might be prepared to see how God will use that to make us more like his son. And I mean, just actually on that as well, he, he, Tim Chester does note that uh, we're, we're often better at interpreting the big events of our lives as God's fatherly discipline, but actually it's often actually the very small things that you're gonna to face tomorrow that are just frustrations yeah. that are very much the same thing. Um, so yeah, actually we're all gonna face these things even in the, in the next few days, uh, just difficulties and pain and frustration. Uh, before we zero in a little bit more on how um, God uses hardships as kind of training and discipline, it is worth saying, as Tim Chester makes very plain on page 56, that bad things that happen to us are just that. They are bad things, but they, that we're not to think, oh, bad things are just good things. Uh, no, they, 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 are, they are difficult things, but they are things that God is able to use mm. as a loving Heavenly Father yeah. for our ultimate good. That's not to say in and of themselves, these things are good things. That's right. um, they yeah. are bad things, but not out of God's reach. So, um, so in that, the language of Hebrews chapter 12 would say these things are, they're not pleasant, they're often painful, Good. Um, but they will always be productive for a, a Christian mm. as they listen to their father in it, um, which I think therefore kind of grounds his, his lessons of kind of persisting in it and persevering and saying, actually, uh, don't lose heart. Um, yeah, don't give up. Mm. See things as, as a father looking after his son. Yeah, yep. that's great. Um, and that he has this delightful little illustration. I love his illustrations in his book mm. because they're just so ordinary. They're the kind of scenes that I can imagine that I've observed. Um, and he's got this great picture of this dad helping a son over a climbing frame mm. by not actually getting his hands dirty, but just being there to say, I'm going to catch you, but allows his son or daughter to go through the distress of upset mm. to realise that they actually have the capacity to do what needs to be done. But the father stood there just to catch him and I think that's just a, it's a great picture, isn't it, of God. Yeah. We may feel sometimes that God is indifferent to us, but the fact is he's teaching us to trust him, to deepen our godliness and refine our faith. And all the time he's ready to catch us if we fall. Mm. It's just a really helpful picture. That's a quote from page 58 there. Yeah. And so, uh, up to this point in the chapter, it would be fair to say that he's been fairly... Uh, vague in general about mm. God is using painful things to be productive in your life to make you more like Jesus but then from this point on page 58 59 he begins to spell out in practice you know what, what are these things that he's producing what's so productive about this mm. painful thing uh, and I mean you, you read it earlier page 59 um, there's a brief summary and then maybe you can talk about the, de the details of it but at the bottom of 59, he says, God disciplines us to refine our faith, wean us from idols, unsettle our self-reliance, display his power and direct us heavenwards. And above all, so that we might turn to him for joy. And those are just big block categories of oh, yeah. all the, the kind of things he's doing. Mm. And you could drill into each one of them, I suppose. Yeah, and I, the danger is that when we face hardships and frustrations, I think, especially that I think he colours in some detail really helpfully when he gets to Mike and Emma at the end of yeah. the chapter. Actually, we have the ability to either turn away from him, actually making us more like the Lord Jesus, or really engaging with him in actually how he's trying to knock the sharp edges off us mm. and making our character more like that of his son. So I just, I just love the really earthy and simple ways in which he, with both Mike and Emma, just tries to earth, okay, here's a frustration that you might face. So you just think of Mike boarding the train and stood next to this guy, guy who has never heard of deodorant. Yeah. And then he, what's the quote he puts in Mike's lips? Perhaps God thinks I need to learn some patience, or perhaps he's, he's giving me time to reflect on yesterday's sermon. My father whispers, Mike, thank you for this train. I've no idea what your purpose is in it, but please use it to make me more like Jesus. I think that's just a really excellent way in which a, a mild hardship or frustration is an opportunity for us either to engage with God to be made more like his son, or for us just to get cross and to be made less like his son. Yeah. And that prayer is just a really helpful expression of that. And I like yeah. it. I mean, it's very uh, poignant. You, you can't get around it. I actually remember having read this chapter. And then that <laughs> night, Zachary comes into our room at like two o'clock in the morning. And I remember actually thinking, 
I know that I'm supposed to say, Lord, make me more like you because of this, but I don't want to right now. And mm -hmm. just that, that sense of engaging with the discipline or actually refusing it because I don't want to right now. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I can look back and laugh, but yeah, at the time, I should have said, Lord, this is painful, but I do want to be like you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, we could say that of anything mm. that will come up in the next few days. Your yeah. example of Zachary coming in in the middle of the night it is a means by which you can be tempted to, to some extent, lose heart mm. in that hardship of the, oh. And it just struck us as we talked a moment ago about actually what's the thing that keeps us from losing heart in hardship and instead being able to observe it as God's kindness in disciplining us is actually by playing this chapter out in stereo with the previous one. Yeah. That as we see God actually ordaining hardships to come our way, we also remember that he gives us so many wonderful good things that we'll say, okay, Father, I'm not going to lose heart with this hardship. I'm going to trust you. Please make me more like Jesus. And I actually know that's your intention, not only through the scriptures, but because of all your kindness and goodness you show me too. Well, that's enough um, for this time. Um, that's chapter four. That's episode five of the podcast. Come back next week as we have a look at chapter five in which we consider the arena of prayer as the place in which we get to relate to God as Father and enjoy him there. Mm -hmm.